Yeah, I think a turn in the semiconductors, which obviously have shown during this latest quarterly reporting season that they're in some trouble with an inventory correction, a turn there is probably one of the most important tells for recovery and the health of the technology sector as a whole. And of course, you mentioned Apple, and what is the company that has uh, the most voracious appetite, particularly for commodity memory chips? It is Apple, so there is some linkage. Intel is okay, right? That, that, that's a totally, de you're talking more commodity chips or, or even Intel has is, is, uh, got an inventory problem? I think there's a inventory problem throughout. Even uh, last week we saw with NVIDIA, and that was a company that, as you know, for a couple of years was an untouchable and a stock that kept on rising regardless of valuation. So it does go through commodity memory, things like NAND flash and DRAM chips that are made by somebody like Samsung and Micron, all the way to what we see with graphics processors at NVIDIA. Uh, when it comes to Intel, Intel seems to have a manufacturing issue that goes beyond. And so in my fund, the only semiconductor name I own at all is Advanced Micro Devices. And I own it because they are taking some micro, uh, market share from Intel. So a couple of quarters, you say, for the correction, the inventory correction to, to work itself out. But then it's going to be a big deal in terms of... Uh, when customers start buying again, you need, to, you need to buy the stocks before that happens. How long then? A, a quarter away? Boy, or? that's, yeah, that's a excellent question. Uh, I'm delving into that. Typically, these inventory corrections are a couple of quarters. But, of course, you know, there are macro factors that are involved. Um, but I tell you this, you know, particularly for something like Micron, which only trades at three or four times next year's earnings, if Wall Street is correct in their assessment of next year's earnings, if and when we get some kind of semblance of a turnaround, I think that stock would probably double, and it probably would double in pretty short order. So in, in that, as far as chips, you, you mentioned Broadcom and Qualcomm and Micron uh, as names, but, but then you figure in NVIDIA you already mentioned, but instead, if you want tech, you go tech-ish, and that's payment yeah. uh, processing. So you yeah, like, that's, but that's, MasterCard and Visa, that's a totally, that, people don't think of that as tech. Yeah, so what do I do, and I've been doing this uh, a long time, is because it's just too tough to be able to guess the turn and see how deep is the inventory correction in semiconductors, I try to play defense. The defense is on the field, and I do that with tech-ish names that are much less volatile. And so, yes, I do own payment processors like uh, MasterCard and Visa, also some tower companies like Crown Castle, American Tower, even a little bit of Verizon, and frankly, recently on the drop, I bought some Boeing. I think all those stocks can be categorized in some way as tech names, and they're great places to hide where you have the D on the field before you feel more comfortable and bring the offense back on the field. So does, does tech need to recover before we're out of this correction or before the overall, will that be the leadership for, for the overall market? And do we have to wait for chips to recover before tech can recover? It just sounds like you're, you're pushing everything out in terms of uh, the overall averages. We've got to wait a couple of quarters for everything to recover or, or you, you're not saying that? I don't know. I think in the, in the more um, defensive uh, sectors, you might have a rebound. Of course, the backdrop is, you know, what happens with, at least in my opinion, uh, China and U.S. and the tariffs, and do we have a situation where we lead to a big downgrade in U.S. GDP? I don't see that. I see a slowdown, but nothing uh, true dramatic. And so I do think it's a matter of time. And technology, when the market becomes more robust, typically is the leader. So I think it'll be okay. In the meantime, I would play defense, and even though I'm a veteran tech investor, I'd probably be tech light uh, for the time being, and that's my own sector. Really? Okay. Um, wow. You've owned Facebook for a while, haven't you? I've owned Facebook, but it's a small position, as is Apple. And, of course, I'm you know, quite concerned about both those companies right now. Both concerned about both. Concerned about sentiment or concerned about the fundamentals at the company or potential regulation that's coming? What, what, are, what are your thoughts on each? Well, Facebook, you know, they seem to have a whole lot of issues and I am not a believer with Facebook that all of a sudden people are going to abandon them as far as users and advertisers. But there 
business models in flux because we don't know exactly how much they're going to have to spend to quell some of these privacy concerns. So I have a sense that at Facebook, sales will rebound at some point once the smoke clears with all this bad PR. But what is their business model? Now they have to have expensive employees you know, vetting all the fake news. And with Apple, I really think, despite uh, what Tim Cook may say, the fact that they are no longer going to give guidance on iPhone units is a real tell. Right. That we are at peak well, iPhone. And yes, I know it's a uh, nice to have a services business, but until things change, you know, the iPhone is still 60% of sales. Paul, do you think it was how they um, articulated that decision in, in terms of sort of the going the cold turkey approach, saying we're just no longer going to provide these numbers, or do you think it's you think it's the it is the tail and it was that quarter? I think it's uh, more the latter. I'm sure that they were trying to wean folks, at least in the investor relations mode, to we are a services and no longer a hardware company. I do think that they are pushing services. The deal that they signed last week with A24 Studios, I actually think is encouraging because they need content and they need cloud. Uh, but the fact is, 60% of their sales are iPhones. And the other thing that was a tell, which I think is interesting, is the iPhone has been around for 11 years. And here is a move that would have had uh, Steve Jobs roll over in his grave. After 11 years, they're finally joining forces with Amazon to sell not just iPhone accessories, but the iPhone themselves. And when you go into bed with Amazon, it typically is very good for Amazon and not good for you. So that move shows me that they are also desperate to come up with a new uh, source of iPhone sales. Mm -hmm. So those two things have me really worried. So I think the stock's worth between 185 and 195 by my latest valuation. So it's probably fairly valued, but I don't see a, a rebound. And I think for investors, that is a stock that should be, if it's in your portfolio at all, it's an underweighted position.